All right, so Jay Powell has thrown down the gauntlet. The market is reacting. So what should you be doing? Well, let's ask our, our next guest to the best in the business, Market Gauge Managing Director <laughs> Michelle Snyder, along with G-Squared Private Wealth CIO and founding partner Victoria Green. Ladies, thanks for joining us on this real difficult day. First, I just got to get your initial thoughts. I'll start with you, Michelle, on the reaction to Powell and, and whether or not this is the big move, starts a big move down from here. Well, first of all, we have been talking about this for a long time, that Powell was not going to pivot and there was some kind of false optimism. So for most of us, this is not really a big surprise. Now, in terms of the technical analysis, so let's forget although, about although, all Although, let me reactions. jump in one second, Michelle. Let, we got a little <laughs> one, one and a half second delay that I've been dealing with the whole show. But even though, even though he, he, tough, he did talk tough, it still doesn't mean he won't pivot. Well, that's maybe true, but I don't think so. And here's the reason why. In spite of everything okay. that's going on today with the sell-off, with, with the hawkish talk, with the dollar finding some flight to safety, even the long bonds going up as a flight to safety, even with the rates potentially going up, what we're seeing is commodities, particularly food commodities, still rising, wheat, soybeans, DBA, sugar, all of them are going up because the one thing that we can't control here is these elevated food prices thanks to good old mother nature and the drought that she's wreaked havoc all over the world right now. So as mm. far as I can see with okay. the Fed policy, I don't see him pivoting until we see some kind of alleviation in these food areas that are having trouble. Good points. Uh, Victoria, uh, your thoughts? Well, they had to bring back market expectations. Everybody said pivot after July, and that wasn't right. So, I mean, he was very brief. It was like 1,300 words, eight minutes long. He said price stability nine times in there. And what we think is most important that we walked away from is the unusually large rate hikes might still be necessary. And this is something they don't want to be in a hike and drop, hike and drop. They mentioned Volcker, as you talked about in your last segment, Charles. So when we look at this, I think it's 75 basis points again in September. You can't say unusually large and not back that up. So I think Powell kind of called a shot there. I think the markets are repricing because the most dangerous thing to these markets is when the Fed expectations and the Fed reality do not align. So I think he had to come out this hawkish and say, hey, we're not pivoting. Y'all, we're going to hike. We're going to tighten. We've got 4% as our terminal rate and possibly staying there longer. So I think this was ripping the Band-Aid off and convincing people that they are continue to be hawkish. And this is uh, what we see as a classic bear market reversal. And not a surprise at all. Even though it's a bear market reversal, there are some things you like here, Victoria. Uh, IBM, CrowdStrike, uh, and some of the energy names, Devin, EOG, and Diamond, uh, Fang. I guess that's the Fang people want to be in these days. Just quickly tell us why you like those. So energy, I know that oil demand sometimes struggles during a recession, but we're in such a weird, constrained world. We even see OPEC potentially uh, pulling back on its supply. With all of these disruptions, I think this is a good place to be. Remember, U.S. EMPs, they're break even, especially in the Permian, which Devin is one of our, our highlights and our crown jewels that we love. Their acreage is phenomenal. They keep bringing on bolt-ons. Their break even is like $30, $30 to get it out of the ground. So even at 85 WTI, which is trading above that now, uh, they're putting out like a 12 to 15 percent free cash flow right. yield and they're pushing all of that back to the shareholders they're not putting it back in the ground they're fixed plus variable dividend and the share buybacks so these energy companies are a great place to be in because one the break-evens are very low so even if wti pulls back they're still going to make money and two they're more. giving it to right. you let me uh, let me bring in michelle because I love that you also have some ideas to share with us on a day when most people are putting their heads in the sand. Very eclectic. So you got Melco, which I think is a pure play on Macau. U.S. still, MSOS, yeah. which is the uh, index for, for, for wheat, but even more specifically, Til Tilray. Some serious bottom fishing here, right? Yeah, well, the cannabis industry had a nice move this week, and even though it's selling off with the market, the CEO of Tilray has said basically what we've talked about, which is the cannabis industry is just a huge explosion of money coming into the, to the country waiting to happen. And with also scarcity potential with water problems in California, that can raise the price. So we think that the market here in cannabis has bottomed and MSOS announced a two times leveraged ETF and that also has helped the market right. as well. So it's just showing there's some interest there coming in right now. Think of it as a, another commodity. All right. 
All right, and, and, I, and I would assume with Melco, uh, maybe China will get out of this, you know, uh, you know, this policy of shutting down every time one person gets uh, a, a COVID. Uh, good stuff. A lot of ideas here. Ladies, thank you both very much, M Michelle and Victoria.